Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Corey. I go by Corey J A on the internet. And today we are gonna do some advent of code. It is just after midnight here on December 4th, so that means it is time for day four's puzzle. Day four scratch cards. Let's dive right in. The gondola takes you up. Strangely, though the ground doesn't seem to be coming with wait, the gondola takes you up. Strangely, though, the ground doesn't seem to be coming with you. You're not climbing a mountain. As the circle of Snow Island recedes below you, an entire new landmass suddenly appears above you. The gondola carries you to the surface of the new island and lurches into a station. As you exit the gondola, the first thing you notice is that the air here is much warmer than it was on Snow Island. It's also quite humid. Is this where the water source is? The next thing you notice is an elf sitting on the floor across the station in what seems to be a pile of colorful square cards. Oh, hello! The elf excitedly runs over to you. How may I be of service? You ask about water sources. I'm not sure. I just operate the gondola lift. That does sound like something we'd have, though. This is Island Island, after all. I bet the gardener would know. He's on a different island, though. Or, the small kind surrounded by water, not the floating kind. We really need to come up with a better naming scheme. I'll tell you what. If you can help me with something quick, I'll let you borrow my boat, and you can go visit the gardener. I got all these scratch cards as a gift, but I can't figure out what I've won. The elf leads you over to a pile of colorful cards. There you discover dozens of scratch cards, all with their opaque covering already scratched off. Picking one up, it looks like each card has two lists of numbers separated by a vertical bar, a list of winning numbers, and then a list of numbers you have. You organize the information into a table, your puzzle input. As far as the elf has been able to figure out, you have to figure out which of the numbers, which of the numbers you have appear on the list of winning numbers. The first match makes the card worth one point, and each match after the first doubles the point value of that card. For example, we have these six cards. In the above example, card one has five winning numbers. Uh, so wait, which one's numbers? Winning numbers and then numbers you have. So the winning numbers are 41, 48, 83, 86, and 17. And the eight numbers we have are 83, 86, 6, 31, 17, 9, 48, and 53. Of the numbers you have, four of them are winning numbers. That means card one is worth eight points. One for the first match, then doubled three times for each of the three matches after the first. Uh, then it just goes through the other examples. In this example, the elf's pile of scratch cards is worth 13 points. Take a seat. Um... Take a seat in the large pile of colorful cards. How many points are they worth in total? Okay, so we just need to uh, calculate this for all of the cards. One sec, I need to get... There we go. Just need to get something out of my way in chat over there. And yeah, okay, so this seems pretty easy. The parsing's pretty easy. We're just going to split on some spaces. Um, and some colons. And some bars, some pipes. Um... Yeah, and then we're just going to take the union, basically, we're going to make this a set, make this a set, see what the union of the sets is, um, and then find the find the, the things and, uh, what is it, what do they call it, the points? Points. Yeah, we'll just get to calculate the points. Awesome. Shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so we are in our repo. Um, I don't think I actually mentioned this before, so we are doing some rust. We've been doing rust for all of these, and I usually have been doing rust, so that is what we're going to do today. And today is 04, and I think it's called Scratch Off? Scratch Cards? Scratch Cards. Scratch. Wow, I cannot spell. Scratch Cards. There we go. Oh. I knew that was going to happen because we need to specify the name of Scratch Cards without the number before it. Scratch. Wow. Wow. It's just after midnight. I'm a little tired. Spelling is hard. I think we finally got it in the end, though. Uh, I want to make these all on their own line. There we go. Um, and it's 04 uh, scratch cards. Scratch, yeah, cards. Awesome. CD to 04. Cargo run. There's our hello world. Perfect. We'll hop on in. Um, and let's set up the stuff we normally do. So let's go and make a new file for our input. Uh, sample.input. That's what I usually call this. 
And let's just hop over and copy that. Awesome. And so let's make a function for part one. And it takes in some input as a string and it returns, oh, like a U64 or something. Um, and right now we're just gonna mark this as to do and we're gonna do, get some stuff up here. Let sample input equals include string. Uh, let sample part one answer is call part one on this and then we're gonna debug out our sample part one answer. Awesome. We actually have to write that first. So uh, I think for today we're gonna do, we're gonna like make a struct for the card and uh, store everything in an actual struct. So we're gonna get to parsing that now. So let's make a struct called card and it's gonna have two things. It's gonna have winning uh, numbers or just winning numbers. I think that's fine. That's a set of U32s. So it doesn't really matter. Let's do U32. Um, and then scratch or like hours uh, is a different set. And let's. Oh, uh, hash set. Um, and hash set is just a hash map without a value. Um, and then it ha implements some some SETI methods on top of it. But that's how it is implemented in Rust, which is a cool fact to know. Um, so then we're going to do impl our card. We're going to write a function called parse. That's going to take an input string. And return one of these. Oh, and the other thing we're going to put in our card is an ID. Um, and we're just going to store that as a number two because it had that. Um, okay, so... If we look at one of these lines here, it's we're going to get the ID first. So we're going to split on the colon. Um, let um, ID split or something equals input dot split. Yeah, on the colon. Um, let ID part is this one. Um, let no let. This is just the numbers. Let number part be this one. Um, wait, can I just do this? Could I do ID part and then number part? Can I just decompose them out of the slice? Expected where your slice found back pattern can't match with input type vec. Okay, so maybe not with the vec, which is fair. Um, but this, I don't even still have the ID from the ID part. Um, oh, wow. That's actually what I needed though. Uh, from the ID part, we want to split on white space to split on the space. And we want to collect that to a VEC and take the second thing and then parse that to a U32. So that was perfect. Copilot just nailed that for me. Um, and then, so next the numbers are split by a, uh, pipe. So let's do let number split equals a number part dot split. This one, it, uh, cargo, or not cargo, copilot did split white space, but we don't want that yet. We want to split on the pipe. Um, and then is it winning and then hours? So let winning equals uh number split yep the first one split white space clutch to a vec iterate over it parse to a u32 and then collect that to a hash set love it um and then ours is the same exact thing i was hoping it was just going to complete that for me but that's okay whoa yeah it didn't it didn't it didn't do what i wanted it to there we go now i know how to use my editor okay and then at the end here we return a self of id winning and ours Awesome. So we have that parsed. Um, and then, so like another function, once we have this parsed, um, at the end of the day, we want a method called um, points. Uh, which is almost something like that. It The intersection counts. So then uh, let count 
intersection count is good. Intersection count. Um, if intersection count is zero, it's zero points. Else, it's uh, two dot pow intersection count minus one. Can't call method pow on ambiguous number type. Uh, can I do, can I tell it that this is a U32? Can't call pow on ambiguous number type. Uh, I think you can do underscore U32 to disambiguate it. There we go. As U32. Uh, there we go. Um, so that's the points here. So now I just, part one might be pretty easy. We might actually have this. So input, we want to go over each line. Uh, oh, input. Oh yeah, dot lines. That's right. That makes an iter. I was thinking I had to make it an iter, but I don't. Um, oh, did I make points in a U32? That's okay. We'll make this a U32 then. I don't want this as. Um, 13. Was that the answer? Yeah, I think it was. Awesome. So we just parsed them into two hash sets, found their intersection, and calculated the points. Um, we did the power of two for the doubling. If there is one thing you wanted one point and then it wanted it to double, so that's the same as this uh, two to the power of intersection minus one. Um, so that's really nice. Made that doubling easy. And I think that's all we needed for part one. We got the sample answer. So let's just get our puzzle input and see how it goes. My dot input, paste that in. Let my input, let my part one answer, debug my part one answer. Woohoo! Awesome! That was nice and easy for part one. I like that. Let's see if part two is the same way. Uh, just as you're about to report your findings to the elf, one of you realizes that the rules have actually been printed on the back of every card this whole time. There's no such thing as points. Instead, scratch cards only cause you to win more scratch cards, equal to the number of winning numbers you have. Specifically, you win copies of the scratch cards below the winning card. Wait, specifically, you win copies of the scratch cards below the winning card equal to the number of matches. So if a car if card 10 were to have five matching numbers, you would win one copy each of cards 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Copies of scratch cards are scored like normal scratch cards and have the same card number as the card they copied. So if you win a copy of a card 10 and it has five matching numbers, it would then win a copy of the same cards that the original card 10 won. Cards 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This process in repeats until none of the copies cause you to win any more cards. Cards will never make you a copy Cards will never make you copy a card past the end of the table. So we're never going to run out. Basically, we have enough cards for this thing to work. Oof, okay. This time, the example above goes differently. Card 1 has four matching numbers, so you win one copy each of the next four cards. Cards 2, 3, 4, and 5. Your original card 2 has two matching numbers, so you win one copy each of cards 3 and 4. Your copy of card 2 also wins one copy each of cards 3 and 4. Your four instances of card 3, one original and three copies, have two matching numbers. So you win four copies of cards 4 and 5. Have two matching numbers, so you win four of them. Yeah, okay, wait one sec. So you win copies... Copies of scratch cards are scored like normal scratch cards and have the same card number as the card they copied. Okay, the card they copied, not what caused them to be copied. That makes sense. Okay, so if you do it in order, you know how many of each you have before you get there, because that's what this example is doing. That's good to know. Once all of the originals and copies have been processed, you end up with 
one instance of card one, two instances of card two, four instances of card three, eight instances of card four, 14. Um, in total, this example pile of scratch cards causes you to ultimately have 30 scratch cards. Process all of the original and, and copied scratch cards until no more scratch cards are won, including the original set of scratch cards. How many total scratch cards do you end up with? Okay, so we just have to run through these rules a bit differently. And it's really just still the number of winning numbers, right? Like the actual winning numbers don't make any sense, don't, aren't, aren't relevant here. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is just uh, winning uh, number count. It's actually the intersection count. It's not named well, but it's actually the intersection count copilot. Um, okay, so we have a method that gets the winning numbers. So I think I need to make an array of the amount of copies. Okay, well, let's make a, let's, let's, I, I got ahead of myself. Let's make a part two here. Um, to do open, yep, debug that. Awesome. Okay, so, um, let's get our cards. Let cards, parse those cards, oh, and collect them to a vec. Uh, underscore to ignore the type since uh, the compiler already knows it's a car. Just makes my life a little easier. Okay, so we have our card and let let cop be count equals a vec of one cards.link. So we I want to count the original one as a copy. Um and then we do cards.link. This is gonna put one and we're gonna have a, a, a length. It's gonna have the length of cards and each one of those is gonna have one. It's gonna fill the vector with one and have its length be cards.length. I really felt like I struggled with getting those words out there. Um so then I think we just wanna go like for, and I never, I want to do an enumerate and I forget which order it is. So I think it's like card and I, um, in cards dot iter dot enumerate. Um, is that right though? Card is the U size and no, so I got it wrong. Uh, enumerate puts the number first. Okay. So let copies equals copy count at i yep um so then let winning numbers is winning number count so then uh for um yeah let's do four oh yeah four j is that well not let's let's make a j that makes sense from um, I to I plus winning numbers, um, copy count. We make a copy of each of those and we make one copy for each of the copies that we had. Um, the loop variable is only used to index copy count. Replace the loop variable J is only used to index copy count. Needless range loop. Well, yeah, what it'll, what it'll, oh wait, what does it want? It told, it told me right there. Iter mute, skip, I take. No, but I'm mutating it. Yeah, integer can't be dereferenced. I think this is what I want, but I don't like that warning. Um, then I think the idea is once I get to the end, it's just copy count dot sum. 
that at least that's the idea here. Uh, is that gonna give me the right answer? It gave me 28, but I think the answer is 30. So that's pretty close though, but I guess uh, not really close enough. <laughs> um, so you win one copy each. Oh, I th wonder if it's... Uh, oh, and it's uh, equal to... You do. There's an equal you put somewhere. Yeah, it's that, I think. Um, but is that the answer? Does that give me 30? Nope, that gives me 60. Hee <laughs> hee. So I don't think that was it. Um, because we go from I- Oh, oh, no, 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 it's I plus one. It, yeah, because we don't want to count- Like, if we're do if we're on card one, we want to get count two, three, four, five next, not ourselves ever again. Now we get 30. Perfect. Okay, so I think that's right. The loop variable J is only used to access- So what do you want me to do? Rewrite. Replace with a for each. No, that's that's not exciting. Um, consider using an iterator. Copy count iter mute. Oh, I don't like that, but that's an interesting way to do it. Huh. I don't really like this range either, but it's it's interesting. Um. For J, I can rewrite this a little bit. I think I'd like it better if it was for J in zero dot dot uh, dot dot equals winning numbers. Um, oh, so actually, let's do one up to winning numbers. It's J plus I, um, and then that's going to be the same thing. Perfect. Just makes a little more sense. From one through the number of winning numbers, um, add copies to this thing. Yeah. Okay, so now let's do this for mine. And let's see if we got that solved nice and easy today. Uh, my part two answer debug. My part two answer. Real big number. There we go. Awesome. I was a little worried there only because that one felt like it was going to not be fun to debug um, if we didn't get it. But we did. Awesome, so that was nice and easy, and actually we can just commit all of day four together all at once, because I forgot to commit in the middle, but that's okay. Yeah, so that was a nice and simple one. I like that. We got that done in just under 25 minutes. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the implementation. It's pretty easy. Um, by line count, parsing is the biggest, but that's just because I'm just doing split style parsing. Um, not super robust, but it works really well for all of these advent of code puzzles, at least in my opinion. Uh, so the first thing that we did was we split on the um, colon here so that we could separate the ID part from the numbers. Um, I actually parsed these IDs, but we didn't end up using them. So oops, but that's fine. Um, and then we have the winning numbers and our numbers. Um, we split again on the pipe to separate them. And then we split on the spaces and parsed each string into a number. Uh, we put those in a hash set so that we could easily find things that were in both sets. Um, and then we found things that were in both sets as the number of winning numbers. Um, and then from there, it was really just following the rules. For part one, it, the points were calculated by getting zero points for no winning numbers, um, getting one point for one winning number, and then your points doubling for each winning number you got after that. Um, so that's what we did here. We said if you didn't get any... Uh, winning numbers you got zero points or else you got two to the power of the intersection count minus one so that gives you one for the first card two for the second and then four eight sixteen and it'll keep going um part two is different though part two changed the rules up on us and instead of counting points we got copies of the cards below it in the stack so if you won five if you had five winning numbers on card one you won a copy of cards two, three, four, five, and six. So you want the, the next five card copies. Um, and so we had to go through those rules and run through the cards and count how many copies we had of each of them. Um, so for what how we did that was we got our VEC of cards and we got a VEC of how many copies of each we had. We started with one because we had one copy of each of them and we just went in order. So for the first card, we counted how many winning numbers there were. 
and we went down and marked the the next indexes as having as many copies as we started with um, so that just let us count how many copies of each thing we had and we could sum it up at the end and that is about all we had for day four this was a little easier i like being able to solve this one in under half an hour that works out well for me because i am a little tired tonight so i'm glad this one turned out to be a nice quick solve for us um and with that i think i am going to get out of here so i can go to bed but thank you all for coming out and doing advent of code with me i'm enjoying it so far and looking forward to day five tomorrow thanks see you everybody bye